That's more like it. These are 2019 Kayak Bass Fishing Angle of the Year. I need to know everything. Who in the what in the where I need everything. If you want to launch, you got to pay me. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm curious, George. I've been the Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready for war. It's going to be a wet day. Turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. Now you be surprised at the info you get just by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Got to keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk if they pop. We ready. We ready. Tired, but ready. It's day two, we crossed Wisconsin. We've got 15 mile an hour winds, supposed to be a little, I think less once the rain starts, but it is gonna be rainy all day. So we go try to catch a few large mouth. Caught like 41 fish in four hours yesterday right here. So I'm, gonna get, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna spend as long, I'll probably spend a couple hours and then I'm gonna go catch the big small mouth, the biggest fish in the river. Um, didn't pan out for me yesterday, but we will see. The brown fish like rain. I don't mind rain, so it should be a good relationship. <laughs> Let's do it. I think you got the national champion over there. That's the guy I gotta do to get some freaking camera time around. <laughs> do you find any big ones here? During practice, I caught a four pounder. I did. I did too. And yeah. like this, this is where I caught all my big ones last year. But I mean, like I said, I caught forty-one fish yesterday. I caught and a ton of fish yesterday. Hey, let's let's tell Torquedo this. If they're gonna give me a a motor here they need to make it come with a gym membership I'm, I'm tired of putting on pounds out here because i'm not paddling anymore this thing will make you fat right here i'll help you catch fish but it'll make you fat too so i'm going to demand that they come with a gym membership next time you purchase one i'm just going to put that out there torquedo this is what body fat will do for you <laughs> short t-shirt shorts flip-flops hand like warmers going, to bog like he's going to a green bay packers game look at that beanie <laughs> Do you have a pom pom? Oh yeah. Oh, he's got the beanie with the pom pom. <laughs> what other apparel do you have on? Hand warmers, all windproof. Hand warmers, windproof jackets. All of it. Do you have fleece? No. <laughs> Are you wearing any kind of like warming socks? No, I don't. You got my NRS booties on. He's got NRS nice. booties on. I'll have my NRS booties on when I get out to the water, but I mean, but right now, blam! <laughs> I mean, it's a balmy 55, 52. <laughs> I fish naked in this if I could. Ha! I n during practice, I never got on to anything good, so I was just kind of living on a prayer yesterday. Uh, started a different area than this. Uh, I had a lot of fish um, marked. They were all on bait and they were all suspended, and even caught a few like 18 inches, which are that's strong here. But uh, started off yesterday, only had a 15 and a 13 in that first spot. And uh, my buddy Russ Snyders, he's currently sitting in second right now. Uh, I knew he was on some good fish, and he gave me a call yesterday, I don't know, about 10.30, and he was like, hey, if you need to fill out that limit, come get him over here. This is how you need to catch him. And uh, went over here, and within the first few minutes, when, when I started this ramp yesterday, got into a group of fish and immediately started catching them. They were small, only like 13s and 14s, but it did fill out my limit in a hurry so uh gonna just try to repeat that yesterday and maybe get lucky and get into a few extra bigger ones too we'll see gonna keep it simple today though keep it simple a lot of this a lot of that <laughs> when you get tournaments back to back to back it's kind of hard to keep a kayak clean <laughs> and you end up with you gotta use different stuff every week and you end up with a whole kayak full of just random baits you've been using just stacked up beside you So we got a uh, fellow team Bonafide and fellow Tennessean right here, and uh, Mr. Adam Riser. Oh, good morning. All right, Adam, what you got going on, man? Well, I don't know that I'm completely in it. Super small limit yesterday, and AOI Chase is pretty much out the door for me. But uh, what about the ten? The ten? <sighs> Can you make it into the ten? I haven't done the math personally. I, th I think some other guys are doing those numbers more than I. I just kind of fish, and then I'll ch I'll. Let it happen as it is later, but uh, I don't think I have a chance at the 10 based on yesterday. But just in case there's some crazy flip flopping going on, mm -hmm. or maybe some Somebody guys struggle, something, yeah. I'm gonna go for it today. Cool. 
I'm actually pretty optimistic. Going to keep it simple, bringing three rods, not really eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just keep it simple out there right. today. I got to talk about one more thing, Adam. Talk okay. to us about the stash. Hasn't this, has the stash changed? Uh, She's a little bit, hasn't it? I, I'll be honest. I took the clippers to it a little bit yesterday. As a little, <laughs> I, a, I really wish we'd have got you yesterday because it was looking like that no shave November. Yeah, in October. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was, it was the, it was the full on caterpillar thing. You could so. accuse me of being in, in <laughs> NHL playoffs there for a little bit. Maybe. All right, man. Well, good luck out there today, bro. I hope Thanks you smash boss. them. So that's what makes this sport so great is the people, man. Honestly, there's so many characters in this thing. So literally when we were filming for the national championship, I said, Adam, what do you do for a living? And the reason I say that is because every time I look at social media, he's fishing more than I can. And I've got the best fishing job in the world. He's like, well, you know those paddle carts down in Nashville? Yeah, that's what I do. I was like, seriously? He's like, yeah, man, I get to party for a, for a job. And I was like, okay, that's pretty good. You get to party for a job that also lets you fish all the time. So for all you kids out there that are looking for a potential career opportunity, um, Uber driver is not the one you should be looking at. Paddle cart driver, paddle tavern, paddle tavern. That's, a, that's the actual name, right? Yeah, the, the, the official party name? bikes, pedal, pedal taverns, party bikes, like pedal it's tavern. A, whatever it is. Don't do one of them cheesy ones where it's a John Deere tractor towing a trailer. That's <laughs> lazy. Get on the paddle ones. Earn your beers. Earn your drinks. Yeah, and that's where the that's where the most fun is had. So check out the uh, the bike taverns, the paddle taverns, and um, heck, when you're there, look for Adam. Jet, they have one down there now that's new to this year. It's a, a hot tub being towed behind a truck. It's a mobile hot tub. So when you're d on Broadway, you're seeing people with like full butt crack sitting on the edge of the hot tub in the hot tub driving by you. They claim to change the water every ride. I don't buy it. I think it's a, a cesspool. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they claim they do. I do not. <laughs> 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 All right, so Adam, so Adam just told us that they uh, they now have a um, paddle. Come come over here one more time. <laughs> they now have a paddling hot tub. You're serious? No, no, you, no, you don't. You don't paddle. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. A, a hot tub that they it's, just tow it's around. It's literally just a hot tub in the back of a trailer. <laughs> it's done up pretty nice. Really? Like it's impressive the effort that they put into it. So and, tell I, me, <laughs> and I'm promoting our competition right now. But, <laughs> but tell me what you just <laughs> tell me what you just said when we turned the camera. On. <laughs> all right. So so Broadway and downtown Nashville. That's basically my office. And there's all kinds of it, we we call it Nash Vegas. All kinds of ridiculous party vehicles. Nash drunk, Vegas, baby. Uh, drunken behavior and. Uh, and every year they keep adding more and more ridiculous vessels that you can uh, consume adult beverages on. Yeah. And, they, and they have a, a mobile hot tub now for the bachelorettes and the other people where there's a truck towing a trailer and in that trailer is a giant hot tub and it's enclosed with like glass panels. And you'll just be driving down Broadway and right beside you'll be like a, a lady's whale tail right there letting you letting you have it right he in said face. butt crack before <laughs> anything and everything i'm desensitized at this point but he also said that uh he said they say they change the water between each trip but i don't buy it so ladies before you hop in the nash vegas hot tub on wheels be sure to double check that whole water thing because otherwise yeah. what'd you call it uh, cesspool <laughs> whatever it is it could, it could get ugly out there and with all the stuff that goes on at bachelorette parties in nashville yeah. You may want to stay out of that water. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, cool. Thanks, man. I'll leave you alone now. Catch him up, brother. It ain't bad, though. Hey, it ain't snowing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, look who it is. Number two is calling. Let's see what's up. What's up, buddy? You're on camera right now, by the way, as you're talking to me, so keep keep it kid-friendly. Do you got it? Do you got it to yourself over there? He told me uh, Matt Scotch is over there at his ramp. I think yesterday, Russ didn't wasn't the only one that launched at his ramp, but I think the area he was fishing, he pretty much had all to himself, minus some bluegill boats that were out there. But uh, any of any of them people we've been running into have been super easy to fish around. They're fine. If anything, that kind of tell you where some of the fish are. Uh, no, he's just saying good luck. Number two, 10 minutes in. Still slower than yesterday.
And still not gonna catch Josh Stewart. <laughs> so uh, I got here Wednesday morning. Uh, drove all night from Cincinnati. Got here and decided to just drive around and look at ramps. Uh, see how high the water was, see what the conditions look like. And I ended up going way up the Black River, um, checking out some ramps there. I thought it looked pretty good, so I uh, planned a float with uh, Matt Scotch for Thursday. So me and him did that, um, but we couldn't find any bass. Neither one of us caught one. We caught, uh, he got a muskie, um, then we had a few pike, a few walleye. And uh, that was it. So the first two days were pretty much a bust. And uh, so Friday, I decided to uh, come out where I won the tournament last year and give it a look. And uh, there's a lot of detached grass, floating grass um, under the water I was getting hung up on. So. Not a bad one. So I uh, came over this way, found some deeper water, came over to check it out, and uh, pre-fishing ended at five. So I came over here, I had about 10 minutes. I had three bites, caught two, and uh, I was like, all right, I guess I'm coming here for the tournament. So there's a lot of fish here, just kind of cookie cutter size. I had a, uh, I ended up with two 15 and a quarters, two 15 and a half, and a 15 and three quarter yesterday. So it's hard to find those bigger ones. I managed to get one so far today. So hoping I could manage to get four more somehow. Between everybody who fished here yesterday and Cody being one of them. So between us, we couldn't even catch any over like 16 or something. So um, if they're here, they're doing something different that we're not, or we're not targeting them somehow. That'll upgrade. That one's longer. This place has so many fish in it that they really do group up. And I mean, they even kind of wolf pack like that. I'm sure there's a few more down there. 15, got a little bit out of that. I want to stay here till this front moves in because they should start biting. And maybe they are, but it's been tough. I'm just trying to trying to make a run at the Angler of the Year again. And I feel like I even need about 88 inches to do that. And I don't think I can get that here, but I just I wanted to get a couple decent ones. And I've, I've got a 17, which it's in the right direction, but everything else is like, I think my small is like 14 and a something, so it's a long ways to go. I'm not wanting to spend as much time over here today, but it's, it's not as easy as it was. You know, I don't usually fish, like, if I fished somewhere the year before, I don't usually put much accreditation into it, but I knew going into this that there was a chance this could be really, really good because of that dugout over there. It's like 32 foot over there, and we're not really on the main river by any means. Um, they, like the, the bass, they have to have wintering holes up north because it all freezes. Like this will be ice in four or five weeks. Um, so there's a ton of bait fish stacked up in that corner back there. But the fish aren't necessarily all there. I mean, they, they'll move 200 yards, 300 yards in, you know, no time. So there's a lot, there's still a lot of fish scattered out on these, uh, these long grass runs that we're kind of on right now. All right, I'm gonna fish just right down to there and then I'm gonna go back to that point. That storm's gotta be getting close to hitting, so they should be biting and they're not.
that is touching. All right. Very good. This will be the biggest one I got on the board so far. This is right on, I mean, just barely squeaking 17 inches. A few more of those. We'll be sitting all right. I could probably stay here and get a couple more inches maybe, but I've got some big small mouth that are close to here. So the only way I'm gonna catch anybody, I feel like is if I, uh, if I, if I go to those small mouth and get some 17s and 18s. Um, and I, and I've got, a, I got a 19 in practice and lost a 19 on them yesterday. So there's hope. Um, I mean, we'll see. I feel like with the, uh, with it getting cloudy, I probably am leaving them biting, but that's yeah, all right. You got Mike's gonna catch plenty of them for you. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I think I've got like all 14, seven fives, a 15, and like a 17, and it like it's just I don't feel like it's really gonna get any better for me. I mean, maybe you know inch here, quarter inch there, but we're gonna go crank up some big smallmouth. That's the plan, anyways. That is the plan. And it's like seven minutes down the road, so it won't be a bad trip. It won't give up a lot of time. Okay guys, so we made the move to come connect with Russ Snyders, who's sitting in second place after day two. Now, Russ is right in the middle of the conversation for Angler of the Year, and let's take a look real quick though at the top 10 because he hasn't loaded a fish yet today. So Jody Queen from Virginia has moved into the lead. Derek Brundle from Massachusetts is in second place. Mike Elsie, the current and reigning kayak bass fishing national champion from Indiana is sitting uh, in third place. In fourth place is Arlie Minton from North Carolina. Eric Siddiqui, who's won a trail event here on uh, lacrosse is always a threat, is, out, is currently sitting in fifth place. Sam Jones from Indiana is in sixth place. Joe Tadeo is currently sitting in seventh place, who started out real early, uh, jumping out to the lead. Mike Cheatham from Tennessee has moved up into eighth place. Marty Hughes from Nebraska has moved into ninth place. And rounding out the top 10 is Mississippi's own Brad Case. So we're gonna get our stuff together, jump out on the water, see if we can't connect with Russ. We're gonna keep an eye on the leaderboard. Things are starting to get crazy, but as it heats up, and I mean literally heats up when the sun comes up, things change. But here's the issue with today. Today, just like in all championship scenarios, we've got another monkey wrench thrown into the equation. And that is this right here. We have got weather coming. And by weather, I mean we have got a front that is moving its way in. And that front is due to hit here about 11 o'clock. A lot of these anglers were really dialing their patterns in and were really starting to catch fish right about the time the rain's supposed to show up today. So, you know, they say you you crown a champion in championship conditions. Well, we've got 54 degree outside air temperature. The water temperature is hovering in the high 40s, low 50s, depending on where anglers are, the depth and all that good stuff. And now they got this to contend with. So it's how you crown a champion. It's how you crown an angle of the year. Let's get out on the water and see if Russ can get them figured out. I'm okay. I am okay. Hopefully you got that. Did you get that? Sweet. Luckily I had on my fall down NRS Sidewinder bibs to deaden the blow and some Chad installed fat, which always helps. See how graceful that was? Call it fat agility. There was no fat agility in that fall down though. <laughs> you know what I dislike about leaving my sunglasses at home? Everything. <laughs> it's fun is definitely a yeah, he's 14 and a half. Fat though. Yeah, they, they are, it's so fun. I mean, I, you can't help but to have fun when you catch this many fish, regardless of what size they are, I guess. 
having said that, this is competition, and I'd really like to have some bigger fish. So on that note, it does kind of get a little frustrating at some time. Uh, spring and early summer are my times of the year where I'm, I feel like I'm the strongest. I've always struggled in the fall, but uh, like I said, this year has been a little different. I hope that's a good sign. All right, guys, so we made it out here. We caught up with Russ Snyder. So Russ is a, a fellow Tennessee, and not only a fellow Tennessee, and he lives in and around the Nashville area. And uh, between the time that we left the boat ramp and now, he's caught three fish. When we left, he had no fish. And uh, he says he's about to pull up on the spot where he's going to catch them. So we're going to follow along with Russ, see exactly what he's doing after he catches a couple of fish. We'll get him to give us a little bit of insight into how he's catching them. So let's follow Russ and see how he does. All right, guys, so what Russ is doing right here is a combination of motoring along and pitching this creature bait and working it along this grass edge. There's a lot of edges out here, and it looks like what he's doing is he's following this edge, pitching up on it and dragging it off of it, pitching up on it and dragging it off of it. He's not making really long casts, and he's really not leaving the lure in the water for a long time. He's looking to kick that grass and almost create a reaction strike, so it's like he's fishing a creature bait but fishing it almost in a power fishing technique so it's a it's a unique technique deadly effective in this type of grass and uh so far it's caught him three fish we're gonna see if it'll catch him some more we're not eating it good we're just pecking at it and we're not hanging on to it long you gotta be you gotta be quick Yeah, buddy. That'll work. That's a chunk. Get it on the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a big one off of that spot yesterday while I was pre-fishing and today. There's not a lot of pieces of wood that extend out into deeper water. There's only a few of them, but those few pieces. How deep are you right there? I'm in six, okay. so it comes out right to the break. Yeah. It goes from about three or four feet, and it drops off into about 10. I'm in 12 right here. Yeah, or 12 is what it bottoms out at in a lot of areas. All right, Russ, you're currently sitting in 25th place. This ought to make you have a pretty good leap. 19 and a half. Yeah, jump. <laughs> All right, Russ, so I pulled up the Tourney X leaderboard and you were sitting in 25th place before you caught that fish. Right now, Patterson Lee from Wisconsin sitting in first with 164 and a half. Mike Elsie is in second with 162. Jody Queen is in third with 161 and a quarter. And Derek Brundle is in fourth with 159 and a quarter. Uh, once you load that fish, it ought to shake up the leaderboard pretty good. Yeah, dang, guys aren't catching them today. Or they're sandbagging. That, that too. All right. Let's see if we get another off that tree. Uh oh, hang on, this is a good one. Oh, shoot. This is the biggest one yet. Oh my gosh. There we go. That is what we're freaking talking about, baby. Mmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'll take a few of these. Oh man, 17 and a half. Seriously? Don't think I'm gonna be able to get any more than that. Oh, 17 and a half. Wow. That's a four pounder that's only 17 and a half inches. I'll take them though. 
That makes me happy. <laughs> See you, sweetie. So Russ, I got some bad news, good news, whatever you want to call it. Josh Stewart, day one leader, just jumped back into the lead with 174 and a quarter inches. That put Patterson down to second place. But Mike Elsie's made a pretty good charge to third with 162 and a quarter inches. Let's head over to Mike Elsie and see how he's catching the fish and where he's catching the fish. Listen, if Mike makes a charge to the lead, he'll be the first person to ever win the national championship to kick off the season and end the year with a win in the Trail Series Championship. So let's go see what Mike Elsie's doing. That was the craziest hit I've ever had. Holy smokes. So I was stuck on a pad. I popped it off the pad and the bait came immediately to the surface and he smoked it on the surface. <laughs> I think this is gonna help too. Yeah, so when this fish first come up, I mean, look how wide this thing is. There are footballs for sure. So yeah, when I see this big old wide side like that, I'm thinking, hey, here we go. But <laughs> then he doesn't have any tail. <laughs> Good healthy fish though, a lot of fun to catch. This place is pretty cool up here. I'm gonna make a run uh, around the corner to my good spot now that I know they're biting. I'll make, I'll make a couple more casts on the end of this tree right here and then uh, I'll be going a good little way. Um, oh, come on. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Get in there. That's more like it. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That felt so good. Do you think that's an upgrade? That's an upgrade. That's got to be an upgrade. That helps a little bit. <clears throat> Even, you know, during practice and everything, I never caught anything really big except for that one, the one that I caught here. Everything else has been 16 or less. So, yeah, if I'd come out with everything in that 17 inch range, I'd be tickled. Pretty cool how this place fishes right yeah. now because the spillway, it's flowing that way. But if the spillway's not running or if the water's lower, it goes that way. Really? Well, it's interesting too, because I've learned that on this end of the lake, the lake's only flooded about a foot or two. Yeah. Where if you go all the way to the top below the other lock. <laughs> nice. That's my limit. All right, guys, I got the uh, my fifth fish, fill out my limit here, and I uh, got it just like I got the rest of them. Just throwing this little Texas rig uh, creature bait, black and blue, working the outside weed lines. Uh, fish are hitting it on the fall. 
This one should put me into the lead, I think. All I need is 13 inches. I think he's a little bigger than that. Are you a leaderboard checker or not leaderboard checker when you're fishing a tournament? I check the leaderboard. Oh, you do? All right, yeah. cool. Some people that I tell, it racks them. It racks their brain because they're like not leaderboard checkers. So if I tell them where they're sitting in the lead or on the leaderboard, it, it messes with their mind. I like it. I think it motivates me. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> And if, like, if you're not catching fish and you look on the leaderboard and somebody's got five fish to me, that's like, okay, I'm doing something wrong, so i got to try harder. You exactly. Know? You can learn a lot from it, I think. All right, so a couple of things about Russ's photo measuring techniques right there. One of the things that you'll notice he does is he puts his board on one side and angles it down. When that fish slides down, that helps close the mouth. It actually puts the weight of the fish forward, which helps the fish relax. And if you'll notice, he had his left leg over the side of the boat, kind of acting like it was guarding that fish. So you hear a lot of people talk about the fact that they lose fish off the hog trough. If you'll look at Russ's technique there where he angled the board, put the fish down, had his hand over the top of the head, what that does, if that fish kicks out backwards, he's got his right leg to stop it. If it kicks out head first, he's got his left leg to stop it. So I've heard everything from people wanting to use trash bags to laundry carts to all kinds of stuff to protect their fish if you perfect your technique you really don't have to worry about losing fish on the board they've been cooperating here too lately. that's true yeah there's definitely something too i've lost a lot of fish it's weird how you know some lakes you go to or a certain time of the year you know it's not just the lake but just certain times of the year i guess and just certain times you catch fish and they're just crazy you can't even hold them on the board and it's it's a struggle and other times i don't even need my hand i mean they'll just lay there yeah. still as can be more you know usually when it gets a little bit colder they chill out a little bit more but uh yeah gotta be careful all of it's fun though <laughs> all right so russ where did that put you on the leaderboord that bumped me into first place first uh, by how much uh three and a quarter inches i got three and a quarter inches yeah I got well, my math must have been off all right. Oh, well, how big was that fish? 16 and a quarter. Oh, there. So I was right. I said 13, so that you had a three inches bigger than that. All right, so what's your smallest fish right now? 15 and a quarter. So there I got only five fish, but all of them are, are decent fish. I'd take, so your you know, 15 is the one you need to upgrade to, yep, uh, yep. To, to push that lead up a little bit. Yep. All right, man. We'll get after it. All right, guys. So Russ just jumped back into the lead, but Mike Elsie is still on fire. Let's head back over and see how he's doing. Fifteen and three quarters. Huh. I, I need to get rid of a 16 anyway, I think. So, yeah, even if it was 16, it wouldn't help. At least it's a bite, though. Sometimes changing it up. You know, all morning, all week, for that matter, it's been windy. I've been able to catch him on uh, a little more aggressive style moving baits like bladed jigs and spinner baits and rattle traps and things like that that have a lot of vibration and sound to them. And now this, since this rain has moved in, it is slick calm. So I just switched up to a swim jig that's a little more subtle, doesn't have as much action or uh, vibration, I should say, to it. And like second and third cast, I got a bite. So we'll see what happens. We're gonna stick with it a little bit, a little bit longer. And we can, hopefully we can get a big one. Losing my glasses. Well, guys, the rain is starting to come down, which means the patterns could change. But it looks like Russ has got it dialed in. We've got to take off and head down south to see if we can't hook up with some of the other anglers. We're going to leave Russ to it. Looks like he's got a pattern to win this thing. And right now he's sitting in the lead. So, Russ, good luck, brother. We're going to leave you to it, man. All um, right. You guys have a safe trip back. And uh, hopefully I can get a couple more. And uh, need to upgrade a little bit. <laughs> that boy Josh Stewart, man. He can catch him. And he's right behind me. <laughs> All right, man, we'll keep checking that leaderboard because I know they're nipping at your heels. And there's two things to be decided here. You got the Trail Series Championship, but I think a lot of people are really more focused on that Angler of the Year than anything else. What do you think? I agree. I should be in the running. All right, so it's pouring down rain, <laughs> like pouring down rain. And uh, there's a row of trucks here, probably 20 different vehicles. Not a single person has given up yet, and there is still two hours of fishing left. 
Kayak anglers are not only some of the best anglers out there, they're some of the most hardcore anglers. And these guys are definitely uh, grinding all the way to the end. <laughs> All right, guys, so that is the end of fishing for the Kayak Bass Fishing Trail Series Championship, Pro Series Championship, and Challenge Series Championship. And pretty much the angle of the year race is now sealed. So we headed back over to the ramp. We caught this guy right here coming off the water. This is uh, Russ Snyder's, Snyder's with an S. And uh, we actually followed him today and watched him put on an absolute clinic. So Russ, talk to me about your experience here in... What's my First in time, La Crosse, Wisconsin. First time here. Never been north of Kentucky, I guess, or this part of the state or country, but from Tennessee uh, is where I'm living now. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit different here, but you know, it's it's a lot, pretty similar in a lot of ways too. Uh, a lot of grass, hydrilla, eel grass. Almost, you know, kind of reminds me of Gunnersville uh, a little bit, but a little bit different too, I guess. <laughs> a little colder. Yeah, yeah. But, so, uh, what do you think was your key to finding fish? staying on fish and being consistent over two days to end the tournament, right? We don't know what the official results are, but the leaderboard is closed to end the tournament in first place. What, what was your keys? Well, pre-fishing, uh, the weather conditions right now that we've had over the past, I guess the last couple months, it's been really, really high water. Everything's been flooded. Uh, and after bouncing around to a lot of different locations while I was pre-fishing, uh, I actually noticed that this part of the lake here uh, was only flooded maybe a foot or two feet as opposed to the very upper end of this pool. I guess not really a lake, but it's a pool. There's a series of, of dams and uh, at the lower part right here, it's only about a foot and a half. And as you go upriver, like I said, it's about seven, eight feet, feet flooded. So um, it's kind of weird how that works, but uh, but yeah, I think the, the more stable conditions here and the fact that it wasn't flooded by like five, six, seven feet, like many, many other places uh, along this river. Now, how did you come to that? Did you come to that by a boat ramp check-in or yeah, did you do any looking, other research? Actually, on the way, so before I fished this spot, uh, I fished the kind of like the mouth of the Black River. And my plan, that was, was it Wednesday? I guess my plan was just to run up the Black River uh, and check a bunch of different spots there. But after my first area, um, on the Black River and just, just fishing some really, really good looking stuff where I felt like there should have been fish and not getting a bite. I uh, actually worked my way uh, back down this way instead of going uh, up the Black River, which was, was a good decision. Uh, actually, on the, so on the way to Black River, I actually stopped because on the road here, there was a little sign for a boat ramp. So I stopped here and just gave it a quick glance and there was another boat ramp a little bit farther up, stopped there, gave it a glance uh, before I actually hit the Black River and then I said made the uh, adjustment and decided to come back this way to check these spots out. So what's crazy is how anglers, especially accomplished anglers, end up finding good water and it doesn't matter where they go. And that's why the Angler of the Year race is decided on different bodies of water across the country with different conditions and different times of the year because you want to find that angler that can adjust, that can adapt. What's ironic about the whole thing is where we filmed Russ catching his fish, Literally, we filmed an entire episode of my show before in a, about a 200-yard stretch that he was fishing. Uh, and that's not necessarily where he caught all of his fish. But honestly, in that stretch, he caught fish in a way that I would have never fished, a technique that I wouldn't have fished, in the part of the area that I didn't fish and caught way bigger fish than I caught. So anyway, he figured out something I wasn't able to figure out, but he was in the right place. Uh, probably what also happened is he was focused on catching big fish. I was focused on making a TV show. So I was catching good fishing out away from the area where you're fishing. You can catch a lot more as far as numbers goes. Uh, I also have a hard time slowing down and fishing creature baits when the fish are really aggressively hitting chatter baits and spinner baits, buzz baits, top waters, and those kind of power fishing techniques. But this guy is doing what I want to call pitch and run technique. I've never seen anybody fish pitching baits, especially a Texas rig plastic, 
and cover as much water as fast as he did. You want to talk about that a little bit for me? Sure. Like, is that something you normally do? Was that something you were doing because you're tournament fishing? Was that something you're doing because of these conditions? Talk to me about what I'm call. I'm literally going to dub this phrase because of watching you. You were running. You had your motor on, pitching, snatch, snatch, reel, hop, hop, reel back in, pitch. So, so talk about that a little bit. So uh, first thing I wanted to add also was um, – when I came out here pre-fishing, I saw a ton of bluegill boats. Bluegill, they were all bait fishermen catching bluegill and pike. Uh, but I saw, there was, on Wednesday, there had to have been like 30, 40 boats just out of this area, and they're catching so many bluegill. And I knew right then uh, that these, these bass here are bluegill feeders. Um, so I tried, you know, I got a, uh, a black and blue or like a green pumpkin blue, uh, kind of a, a swimming creature bait. Uh, which I thought resembled the bluegill, and I just hop it through the through the grass, almost fishing it like a swim jig. Uh, but I feel like having the uh, the Texas rig just made it a little bit more weedless, uh, especially because all the dead eel grass that was floating around everywhere. Uh, so I'm just hopping it through the clumps and just really just trying to find those outside edges of the grass. Uh, most of the grass came out uh, to about four or five, maybe six feet. Um, and a lot of times it was a drop right after that. A lot of the areas around here, it's just kind of a, a flat terrain from the bank and there's, there's a lot of just little drop offs. And the steeper the drop off, like if it goes from four to like 12 feet rather quick, those are the areas where they were really concentrating. If it kind of goes out to four or five and just kind of tapers like that, uh, there wasn't as many fish on, on those areas. So I had it pretty dialed in as far as exactly where they were positioning. So certain areas I'd really slow down and I might still be working my bait pretty fast, but I'd really pick it apart in like a little maybe 100 yard stretch. Uh, and then other areas you could still get get bid on the outside weed lines, but they just weren't concentrated and just wasn't as a high percentage of an area. Uh, so I just kind of put the motor on and uh, cover some water between the, you know, really key areas is what I was doing. So listen, I guess that makes sense. And that was something that I didn't pick up in the observation. I realized he was fishing a Texas rig, didn't really take that good a look at it. So now I realize he was actually really was power finesse fishing. He was fishing a bait that is normally a finesse style bait or a bottom bait, but he was swimming it and hopping it. That makes sense, especially considering what you said, that these fish heavily feed uh, on brim. Uh, this pool right here in particular is more stable than the other pools this time of year, and that's not by accident, and it's pretty awesome that you figure that out. So anyway, when you start taking into account a complex fishery, the more variables you take into the account, the more water you cover, the more time you spend pre-fishing, the better you prepare yourself to be successful. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Smash that thumbs up if you like this kind of content. Uh, go down in the comment section below, congratulate Russ on what is most likely one of the biggest margins of victory that we've had in a championship other than Mike Elsie's giant 16 inch deficit at the national championship. Um, and then just let us know what you think about these vlog style videos, this tournament coverage. Do you want us to do more of this, less of this? Uh, do you like the mix? And um, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. In the, in the trophy back, grab that trophy real quick. But I took over the mic because there's one more announcement. And for me, uh, as a former competitor and as an angler who really appreciates consistency and figuring things out and the reason we have these nationwide tournaments to get folks you know, to try different waters, I think that the title that's probably the most prestigious that's left question marks in people's minds. The debate has always been who's the better angler, the national champion, the person that wins the big event, the person that fishes the most consistent all year long. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, I personally think that the angler of the year is the title that most competitors most want. And so congratulations to Russ. He's our 2019 Kayak Bass Fishing Angler of the Year. Last year, I actually called that Russ would be the AOI this year. <laughs> so I fished in a tournament and got DQ'd in, on Old Hickory Lake because I didn't read the rules for cast. 
and thought I had the tournament won and then found out I didn't. But the only consolation was is that even though I thought I had it won and I got DQ'd, I wouldn't even have been close because this dude, I was like, who the hell is Russ Snyders? Because he won like by seven and a half inches over what I thought I would have won with. But anyway, dude, you're going to take home another $2,500 in bonus bucks. So there's that. So he's got the $500 KBF bonus bucks. He got the $500 for Yak Attack bonus bucks. He got the $500 for NRS. Got the $500 for Bending Branches. And then he got the $500 for Torquedo. Now, you guys know that I've always got something up my sleeve, even if they're short sleeves. So I do have some bad news, right? The bad news is, is that he didn't enter the other events. With the Torquedo, we had a thing this year called the Torquedo Triple Threat that wasn't advertised. I talked to a few people about it. I discussed it last season, and we put it in place this year. And if you were able to win the Triple Threat, it was going to be a $15,000 bonus. We didn't advertise it. We're going to do stuff like that all the time because the way it works is, if you support our sponsors, we're going to give back. We're constantly going above and beyond. One thing that we love about what we do here is that people whip out the calculators all the time when the event's got a high number and a low number. Whip out your calculators for all this money this weekend. It was, there was over $53,000 up for grabs potentially for first place if you collected all the bonuses, won all three events, and that's after having a $70,000 event at the beginning of the year. So. We're giving back to the community as best we can. You guys competing at every level is what's helping us do that. And it's really what's lighting a fire nationwide among clubs and organizations really getting going. I'm not going to get on the soapbox. I'm just going to say we couldn't do this without awesome sponsors. We couldn't do it without y'all. Keep going to the events. Keep supporting the organization. And we'll keep trying to give back. But, dude, $10,000 guaranteed for Angler of the Year. So you're going to take home $10,000 for Angler of the Year. You're taking on $3,019 for the Trail Series finish, $2,500 in bonus bucks, so not a bad haul for a weekend worth of work, right? That's, that's my best payday in fishing. No doubt. All, right. all right, so, all right, man, congratulations. Let me get out of the way, let these guys get some pictures, and then we'll be on to the Pro Tour. Taking home $8,120 with 172 and a quarter inches out of North Carolina, Mr. Jamie Dennison. Congratulations, bro. Cool. And so that y'all can stop texting me, yes, that is Mr. Lynette, all right? So stop texting me. I love you, man. I'm good. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all see that color he changed right there? <laughs> I'm, I'm locking my door tonight, I promise you. Hey, I got dared by 75 people to do that, so y'all all can say, don't dare Chad, he'll do it. All right, there you go, man. All right, Congratulations, guys, everybody bro. want to give a round of applause, Mr. Oh. Josh Stewart. Oh. He's a 2019 Pro Tour champion. Oh. $10,000. All right, so 10000 here. You want another thing tonight, right? Mm -hmm. 10000 and then some bonus bucks. So over $20,000. Not a bad haul, but Russ played the spoiler for you for the triple threat. Awesome. Which would have been like 53, I think, if what I did my math right. What are you talking about? 53? Yeah, we had the Torquedo triple threat that we didn't have. Torquedo. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, then. Well, he spoiled it for you then, Russ. So anyway. All right, man, I'm going to turn it over to you. Give me, the, uh, give me that piece of hardware for a second, and then... Uh, Talk to us about your experience here. What'd you do? How'd you catch them? Where'd you catch them? All that good stuff. <laughs> Basically, I come up here and did one day of pre-fishing up, you know, around the black and didn't have much luck. So I went to an area that I was familiar with that I fished last year. And um, said, when I come up there, um, I mean, I fished all around at a point where there's a big hole at and there's a bunch of bait. I didn't catch anything. So I kept going towards the spillway and I ran into some fish and a lot of fish. I'm talking a lot of fish. Like I caught probably 15 in like 30 casts. Nice. And first day of fishing, I went back there and I, I, I yesterday I probably caught about 60 fish. I mean, it was, it was, it was unbelievable. It's probably one of the best days fishing I've had in years. Um, but I, I mean, this is going to sound a little repetitive, but I did catch them all on the wacky rig cinco. I believe you. I don't think there's anybody here that doubts that. <laughs> wacky rig cinco or a jig? Is that pretty much your arsenal? Uh, well, I, I caught maybe three on the chatterbait. Okay. When'd you add that to the mix? 
when they went, when they went <laughs> in the wet. Literally, I'm just going to be straight with you. This guy actually got me some really good uh, sponsorship love in the national championship episode when he said, do you know how much money has been won on a Cinco? The way that that was edited, uh, Alex did a good job because actually they were talking about how easy the Cinco is to fish, and I don't really like to fish the Cinco. And then he said to Gene, you know how much money's been won on the Cinco? And then it was pretty much a cup of shut up, you know? And then as, as, soon as, uh, as soon as Yamamoto saw that, like literally I had an email from the VP of marketing. So I'll get those guys to send you like a crate yes, of Cinco's. Yes, so that would be awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> seven inch ones the five inch ones. i'll tell you what you fill out me a wish list and you'll never buy another cinco again how's that sound that sounds wonderful. all right congratulations man there you go all right let's give him a real good round of applause your top money winner for the weekend mr josh stewart what's that he was Sitting across the way. Jamie said he was less than one tenth of a mile from him the whole weekend. Yeah, we sit there and watch each other. Were you throwing a Wacky Rick Cinco? No. Okay. Well, there's the difference. How much money has been won on a Cinco this weekend? <laughs> uh, about 24 grand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool.